We have talked repeatedly about the Enron effect. Enron's problems have given Black Eye too much of the energy trading business, even though the problems have to appear to do with accounting, not energy trading. So how do other energy traders separate themselves from the E word? Well, here we go from Wall Street to Wells Street. Jane Wells to find out how one company, Dynagy, is fighting back. Jane Wells is here with more. Hey, Jane. Hey, Michelle. Nice to see you. Second day of the new show when you're already running the whole thing. <laughs> you work fast. Go, girl. Dynagy says its ad campaign has nothing to do with Enron, but the company admits that post-Enron, Dynagy has become a household name. After all, this was the company that wanted to buy Enron. The good news, says Dynagy, at least everyone now pronounces the name right. They're not saying Dynergy. But analysts and marketing experts say it's critical that Dynergy shows people it is not Enron, and they praise the company's marketing strategy, which includes commercials like this one. So, Jim, how are things at Dynergy? Well, we're managing the gas supply for this electric utility in the Midwest, and we realized they had too much supply for the summer, so we took their extra gas, and we stored it in Chicago. Then we generated electricity over here as their backup. Later, we sold their gas down south. So everybody got what they needed. We do that kind of stuff every day at Dynagy. Would you please pass the potatoes? I think they're in Chicago. <laughs> Well, while energy companies like Williams have had ad campaigns emphasizing their hard assets like pipelines, Dynagy is emphasizing its energy trading business, the same business Enron was in. CS First Boston's Kurt Lauder says that campaign may be effective in telling people that while Enron had some accounting problems, energy trading is a sound business with a tremendous growth future. And he says it's smart for Dynagy to emphasize its people. It really is a people business at the end of the day in energy marketing. So putting a human face on those people and attracting a bigger market share of the $400 billion annual energy marketplace uh, in the U.S. is really the goal of the exercise. Uh, I believe this power plant belongs to me. Right. Well, those ads actually started running in November as part of Dynagy's sponsorship of the PGA. By then, Enron was already coming apart. Then in January, Dynagy began running these ads in the Wall Street Journal which the company says are part of a more serious content-focused campaign. And while a lot of people didn't really know what Enron did, in this Dynagy ad titled Candid Answers from Can-Do People, it has a regional VP answering questions like, Ron, could you explain just what Dynagy does? Bauer College of Business Marketing professor Betsy Gelb says providing this sort of clarity and transparency in an ad campaign is very smart. And she compares Dynagy's situation, listen to this, to what the painkiller industry went through after the cyanide laced Tylenol deaths when suddenly companies were faced with questions they'd never been asked before. Nobody ever thought about whether a package was tamper-proof. In the same sense, people did not walk around thinking, are the numbers this company gives out real numbers? And in a sense, uh, Dynagy is caught in the same situation as Tylenol's competitors were, where suddenly people have an additional criterion for evaluating the company. Dynagy believes the $8 million marketing campaign has been effective. The communications chief says last year, Dynagy was a Fortune 54 company, but quote, nobody knew who we were. Michelle, we certainly do now. Absolutely. All right, thanks, Jane. Sure. All right.